Hey, everybody. Uh, le we got to continue our circles, you know, lessons here. There's going to be another one after this. There's going to be three circles, circle quizzes in total. Um, I know it's a lot, but I mean, there's a lot to learn about when it comes to circles. So but we're going to jump right into it. Uh, we are going to start. We ended last video with arc length, right? How to find the length of an arc on the outside here. We're going to start this video with how to find the area of a sector. Now a sector, um, a sector would be this gray area. It's kind of like, think of it like a pizza slice. A sector is a slice of pizza. And we're going to find the area of that slice compared to the whole thing. So the biggest issue when we're doing area of a sector, the biggest issue that I see students run into is they actually mix this formula up with um, arc length, length of the arc. So area of a sector is similar. It's central angle over 360 degrees. And then that equal, wait, not equals, sorry, times, and it's multiplied by the area of the circle. Get a little line over here. So area of the sector is the central angle over 360 times the area of the circle. For those of you who have a much better understanding of math in general, you're taking the fraction, right? You're taking the portion of this circle that is grayed in and you're multiplying it by the area of the circle to figure out how much this area is. If that doesn't make sense to you, it's fine. Just do the formula. Central angle over 360 times area of the circle. Now, the reason why uh, this is difficult, not difficult, I'm sorry. Thank you. The reason why this and arc length get mixed up is because they both have central angle over 360. And so a lot of people tend to mess up this part of the, or the side here, the area of the circle. They'll confuse it with circumcenter. So for instance, arc length is central angle over 360 times circumference, right? So, can I slide that over? Uh, I can. So, area of a sector, central angle over 360 times area of a circle. Arc length is the central angle over 360 times circumference, right? Well, I would suggest that, I mean, when you're kind of confused, look at your answer choices. If your answer choices are in kilometers squared, units squared, then you're doing area of a sector because they want the area, right? And area is in units squared. If it's just units, you know, 1,200 kilometers, then that's arc length. It's just length of circumference. So if, if those are confusing you, I get it. Um, just make sure you know the difference because we're just, I mean, we're going to complicate a lot of things. We're going to get really far into these topics, so. But area of a sector is central angle over 360 times area of the circle. So if I wanted to change that up, area of the circle, of course, is just. Oh, that's right. The pi symbol looks really bad in Zoom's annotate. That's why I was doing it in MS Paint. Oh, that sucks. Well, how hard would it be for me to flip over? All right, hold on one second. I should be able to do this pretty quickly. I shouldn't have to redo the whole video. Uh, let's edit. Come over here. Cool. Area of a sector, central angle, 60. Yeah, this ain't too bad.
All right, not too bad. All because I don't like the pi symbol. All right, and then area of a circle, of course, is pi times r squared. And so your formula is central angle over 360 times pi r squared. So there's no other nuance to this. There's no like weird way to present it. There's not, they, they say, what is the area of this sector? Or what is the area of this piece of the circle? And then you plug in the information you have. Your central angle is of course here in the middle, right? Your central angle. And then your radius is your radius from the center of the circle going to the outside. That distance is the radius. One thing I forgot to mention in the last video, central angles and the degrees of the arc. Now there is the length of the arc, the measurement, right? It is so many kilometers, but there's a degree value of the, of the arc and it's the same as the central angle. These would be both 84 degrees because the arc and the central angle are the same degree measurement. Uh, just in case, you know, they say find the area of this sector and then they put degrees on the outside. Just make sure you understand that's, that's your central angle. They're just trying to confuse you by making you take that extra step. All right, but we can plug this in pretty easy. Our central angle is 84 over 360, right? Oh, wait, no, not annotate. Oh, no, I'm all over the place. Go away. I was using the wrong thing. All right, here we go. All right, 84 over 360. Oh my God, I can't line this up. There we go. Times. We're gonna continue to plug things in. We got pi times our radius squared. Our radius is 42. There we go. So once you get here, it's just calculator work now. It's just plugging it in. So I'll start with the fraction so that I can just start multiplying. 84 divided by 360 equals, all right, times pi, and then times 42 squared equals, and oh, where'd it go? Come back, come back, come back. There we go. So our area of the sector equals 1,293.08 kilometers squared. So area of a sector, I mean, and I said this in the last video and I mean it, circles are not a difficult topic at all. There's just a, just a, I mean, there's so much. There's so many topics, there's so many formulas, there's so many things that have to do with circles. There's so much information, but none of it is particularly difficult. I mean, area of a sector is just take this number, divide it by 360, multiply by pi and by this squared, and you're done, right? So it's not hard, but it is a lot of information. And it's a lot of information that's very similar. So there's a lot of things you can confuse or mess up. So please take some time with these videos. Make sure your notes are, you know, decent. Make sure you're, I mean, hey, take notes. That'd be nice. Uh, take notes. That will help a lot. So, all right. So that was area of a sector. Let's move into inscribed angles. Now, I know this picture looks a little confusing at first, but I'm going to uh, explain it. All right. Oh, I need to do edit. Inscribed angles. There we go. So I know this looks a little crazy at first was because I really wanted to demonstrate a specific topic to you. So the first thing I want you to learn is what an inscribed angle is. An inscribed angle is created by two chords in the circle whose vertex rests on the outer edge of the circle. So the two chords meet up at a point on the circle and go out and it creates an angle. That angle is an inscribed angle. Scribe means to write, 
in means inside, so this is to write inside. It's an angle that is written inside the circle. Now it's not a central angle because it's not in the center, right? It's not in the center of the circle, it's out somewhere along the edge of the circle. And the concept here is really, really easy. I'm gonna explain it to you in a super fast way. If you are going from the inside out, right? If you are going, if you know this number, so let's, we'll go, we'll slide over here and do this one first. If you know the number inside and you wanna know the number outside, you're going from here, right? To there. From inside outwards, you multiply by two. Times two. So inside out, right? You're going, you're getting bigger, you're getting larger, you're multiplying by two. If you're going the other way, you're going from the outside in, you're not gonna multiply by two, you're going to, let it, hey, I got it, divide by two. So I'm trying to make that as simple as I possibly can. When it comes to inscribed angles, if you're going inside out, you multiply by two. If you're going outside in, you divide by two. So inside out is getting larger times two, outside to the in is getting smaller, divide by two. So to find these measurements, right, to solve for X here, all we have to do is do 74 times two. Easy peasy, right? 148 degrees. That's our X there. You just multiply by two. Coming over here, 44 divided by two will equal X. That's gonna give us 22 degrees. 44 divided by two. So I hope I hope that's nice and simple. I hope that's stuck in your mind. I inscribed angles, I think, are really easy. But, I mean, of course, obviously, there's the issue of mixing these two up. You know, multiplying when you should divide, dividing when you should multiply. So I use that, like, idea in my head. Inside out times two. Outside in, divide by two. All right. Let's go to our last one on the quiz. Circumscribed angles. Now, circumscribed angles look insane. They look insane and they are stupid easy to do, but they look like this. And yeah, it looks cray cray. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I guess I can use annotate because I don't need the I symbol anymore. So there's a lot of stuff going on here and I'm gonna explain it to you. Um, one, Oh, let me do text, there we go. These lines right here that are creating this angle on the outside of the circle, this circumscribed angle, uh, circle means circle. So this is written circle angle or circle written angle. I know it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense, but what they mean is that the angle is written around the circle, right? The angle is drawn around the circle. That's what they're trying to say. But this line right here is called, a tangent line. And very similarly to this guy right here, that's a tangent line. Think not like, um, not like when we did trig, sine, cosine, and tangent. Think more along the lines of like in a conversation, you know, someone takes a tangent, you know, you say, oh, I was in my room, you know, playing on my phone and, I, and then the person's like, oh, what kind of bed do you have? Like, obviously that's not the story you're trying to say. That is a tangent. That is not what you were trying to talk about. And this person is asking you uh, creepily, I guess, about your bed. That's weird. I, I didn't, whatever. So tangent line, right? It's a tangent. It goes off the circle. It goes out of the conversation. It does, um, I'll just use this pen right here, whatever. There is a point right here 
and right here. These are called, let me do a little arrow. These points are called the point of tangency. <laughs> So think of the circle as the conversation you are trying to have or the story you are trying to tell. And then think of this point of tangency as the one thing in your story that that person ran off with and started talking about instead, right? It has nothing to do with the actual story, but they did meet up at this one point, And that is the point of tangency. Uh, the only reason why this matters is because um, I'll do it in blue. A radius and a point of tangency create a 90 degree angle. There you go. So point of tangency and the radius create a 90 degree angle. I've seen them actually use that as a question. Um, that's why I'm, you know, notifying you, letting you know. So, but regardless, we've got our circumscribed angle out here, right? The X degrees. We've got our central angle, because this is the middle of the circle. These are radii. And all we have to do is figure out what is X. This is really, really simple. It's really nice, because it's really simple. Circumscribed angles are supplementary. Supplementary to the central angle. Circumscribed angles are supplementary to the central angle. Supplementary, of course, means add up to 180 degrees. Two angles that add up to 180 degrees are supplementary. So in order to solve circumscribed angles, you don't have to care which one of these numbers you have. You can have the circumscribed angle, you can have the central angle. It doesn't matter. You're gonna take the number you have and you're gonna subtract it from 180. 180 minus whatever you were given because the other one is the answer. So in this case, we had 135, right? Get rid of the one and be 50, 45. And that's it. X equals 45. Circumscribed angles are super, super easy and nice. So whatever number they give you, whether it be the circumscribed angle or the central angle, all you have to do to find the other one is subtract what you have from 180. And that's the other one. Easy peasy. So those are the three topics on the next quiz. There are three questions on each one. Um, I didn't shuffle them all up like I normally do. So I think it literally just goes three area of a sector problems, three inscribed angles, three circumscribed angles. I probably should have mixed them up. Um, I really probably should have mixed them up, but I didn't. So, you know, that's your quiz. So by all means, uh, make sure you get it done. Make sure you stay on top of the work. I know I'm putting out quite a bit, but that's because our test is in, let's see, just to freak us all out. Today's Wednesday, the 21st. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, other way. 18, 19 days. So we got 19 days. That's with we weekends included. We could take the weekends away and talk about how many school days we have, but I don't want to do that. So we got 19 days until Monday the 10th where we start testing. And, you know, everyone's taking their test between the 10th and the 12th. So, yeah, we got we to gotta get a move on. I've got one more circles uh, quiz that I have to come up or that I have to cover with you guys. And then 3D geometry which will only be, I think, one or two quizzes, or yeah, quizzes and videos, and then review. So we're getting there, we're almost there. Almost done, folks. So bear with me, stick with it, you know, try your hardest, we'll get through this, we'll have a good time, we'll be done with it, 
and then we can enjoy our, all of us can enjoy our summers. Well, have a great one. And until next time, peace out. <laughs>